Well, good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful Monday morning, January 22nd, 2024. We get together with our distribution partners most weekday mornings at this time to talk about strategies, tips, share techniques, success stories, and support each of you. We use the Q&A, the question and answer function of Zoom. And so at any point you have a question, comment, or concern, go ahead and type it in. It's kind of like a chat box, and that'll allow us to assist you with that. I suppose our, our primary purpose of getting together each day is just to make sure that you understand what to do, because I'm, I'm assuming you're either a branch office or, or considering becoming one if, if you're not on chapmanloanprogram.org, which is shared here. This is where you become one. What we do is it's, it's needed, it's valuable, it's credible, it, it's real. But what we do is we help small businesses through the funding package. You might say, well, why in the world would people want a funding package? Well, there's a lot of small business owners or prospective small business owners. In other words, they don't own a business yet, but they'd like to. There's a lot of small business owners that want and need capital. But what is the prerequisite? you need to have a fundable business. And a big barrier that you and I commonly see is many people that want funding don't have a fundable business. And worse yet, a lot of them don't even know what it means to have a fundable business. So a big part of what you and I do is educate. We don't really need to sell anyone. We, we educate them. And we can educate them through what we call the comparison sheet, which this training video here at the center of chapmanloanprogram.org provides. We can teach them through the full PowerPoint. One of the, the perks, if you will, of being a distribution partner is we provide you editable versions of all of this. The PowerPoint and the press release, which is, uh, there's the press release, the press release, editable version of the proposal. Because you're able, as a distribution partner, to go out to the marketplace under your branding and under your pricing. And so the end result is we provide a scope of services to create a fundable business, and then the client can go to funding. I think sometimes people will be skeptical. Well, uh, no one gets funded, or, or banks don't really loan money. And that's an absurd statement, but I just... I think sometimes people are influenced by their their sphere of, of influence, right? So if you go down to the Hyundai dealership to look at a new car and you look around and say, well, everyone drives Hyundais. Well, no, not everyone drives Hyundais, but if you're in a Hyundai dealership, that's probably what you're going to see. So sometimes we'll work with clients or even distribution partners that's around a lot of unfundable people. And so they'll think, well, everybody's unfundable. There's no way to get funding. That's not true. We've had two deals fund already this morning, and it's now only 8 o'clock a.m. Central on Monday. So two deals have funded already this morning. We sent you out a, a success story. And, I mean, it, it, it's real. If, if you just stop and, and, and we, we don't need to be negative, but it's fine to be analytical, what does it take to have a fundable business? Well, you and I know that, and it's it's these elements, and that's what it is that we provide. So let's go through it briefly and then open up to questions that you have. Because if, if you see the need in the marketplace and you have a solution to other people's problems, and thirdly, you control how much you make because you determine the pricing, why in the world? Why in the world wouldn't you be helping on average at least one client a day? It just, it doesn't make sense. So if we step back and say, well, what does it take to have a fundable business? It starts with the very basic. Does the business have a good, unique commercial business address? Home addresses are not going to meet the criteria for most lenders for larger capital raises. Same with post office boxes and shared virtual offices are not good as well. So what what's the specific criteria that we're looking for here? And of course, that's provided for free through the grant. 
Well, the address needs to be coded as a business address. The United States Postal Service has a database. So every address in the United States is coded. It's classified. So first of all, we need to have a business address. And then secondly, it needs to be unique. In other words, not shared. So what does that specifically mean? It means it needs to be a unique suite number. A, a, an address includes what? It includes city, state, and zip, of course, but also there's what's called the street address. And there's what's called street address one and street address two. Street address one is like 123 Main Street or 456 Broadway Avenue. And then street two, that field is the specific suite number. So what do we provide for free through the grant for clients that are in the startup package is a free unique business address. Secondly, each business needs to be in good standing with the Secretary of State. Well, the grant provides that for free. So we'll actually file at no cost to the participant with the Secretary of State to form the business. The third thing that we need to have is, of course, an EIN number which allows us then to open a business bank account. So these three kind of can be grouped together. This is the foundation of a fundable business. Now you may run into some people that already have this or parts of this, and that's fine. That doesn't disqualify them. We can work with what they have and build from there. But if we don't have these three bullets, their business isn't fundable and it's not really even ready to become fundable, if that makes sense. So that's that's where it starts. And there's a lot of small businesses out there that don't even meet those criteria. But I would say in general, a lot of entrepreneurs understand the importance of those three items. They may or may not comply, especially with having a good address, but I, I, don't, I don't think this is a surprise to anyone. But because of the grant, we're able to help individuals with these resources for free. Now, is that enough? If someone has those three things, are we ready to go to funding? Mm, typically not, especially not for a larger amount. The next thing that we need to have, which we provide for free because of the grant through the startup program, is we need to make sure that the business is credit worthy. Not talking about the business owner. No, no, no. The business. So there's different credit bureaus for businesses like Dun and Brad Street. So the first thing that we do is work with the client to make sure that their profile is complete. Well, what does that mean? Well, often they'll have an incomplete profile. Maybe the industry code is missing. And if it's missing, or I was going to say it's either missing or it's incorrect. But you might say, well, if it's missing, is it really that big of a deal? Yeah, it's a huge deal because lenders or prospective issuers of credit might assume that they're a riskier business than really what they are and therefore not extend credit or loans to them. So we want it to be accurate but optimized. So we help them do that. Then we add free trade lines. And in fact, our goal is to add a minimum of four, F-O-U-R, four free trade lines. And that's a big deal. So these are real trade lines, primary trade lines. And what primary means is that the individuals can use them. It's not none of the, any of this nonsense of spending money to someone to have something that's wink, wink, a trade line that shows up on, on their credit profile, but that's not real. Because those types of arrangements could be considered fraudulent practices if you're using that to get approved for funding. We won't do anything that's gray. So in fact, we're adding true, real primary trade lines. For how much? For free. So is that enough? So if we have a good address and we're in good standing with Secretary of State and with the IRS, we've got a bank account and, and our business credit strong, are we ready to go get a big loan? No, it's still not a fundable business. The last element we need to have is we need to have strong financials, specifically a balance sheet. This is where I get the most pushback, and I suspect you probably will too, because people often lack the financial literacy that you and I have. That's why we need to train them, and especially training them with the full PowerPoint is helpful. People want an excuse. Oh, it's a new business. Of course I don't have a balance sheet. Well, that's a horrible approach. We need to have a balance sheet. 
Or what's a new business? Of course, my balance sheet's not strong. That's horrible. You should have a strong balance sheet, even if it's a new business. And so we, we have to overcome that ignorance and then help them understand we're going to help them fix that. We're going to transfer over literally $10,000 to them to add to their balance sheet. So now they have collateral and those are in the form of receivables. And then we help them liquidate those receivables to turn that into cash. So this is essentially what it takes to have a fundable business. Once we have a fundable business, then we can go to funding. And just as I mentioned, we've had two deals fund already this morning as of 8, 11 a.m. And I mean, any business can get funding if it's fundable. I think the biggest obstacle you'll face is you'll have people that come to you and they don't have a fundable business and they're kind of pissed off about it. But it's like, well, that's what we're here to do to help you. The amount of funding can vary based upon the client circumstances. What do they want? What do they need? We sent out to each of you this morning, as well as a reminder for today's training, a funding success story. It came, uh, the, the lender, it's a term loan from Beal Bank, B-E-A-L, Beal Bank. So a normal bank, a normal type of, of loan. I believe it was 10 years, 120 months. I don't have that in front of me, but I believe that's the case. And so, I mean, it was, it was a very large amount. If, if uh, I recall, it had two commas in it. So it was a very large amount. Does that mean that everyone's going to go get 100 or 200 or 300 million dollars? No, no, not everyone needs that. And, and frankly, not everyone will qualify for 350 million. But the point is, we can help anyone get funding based upon having a fundable business. We can get referrals from Beal Bank. We can get referrals from JP Morgan Bank, from Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Capital One, and so forth, because a lot of bankers and professionals that are in the lending space deal with clients that are not fundable. So they could refer those individuals to you. We could run them through this curriculum, get them fundable, and then take them back to the referral source for funding. There's other types of refer or funding programs, I should say, as well. One of which, one of our favorites, is the Chapman Fund. The Chapman Fund has both strengths and weaknesses. A strength is that it comes from a taxing authority. It's money that's set aside. It's set aside that they, they want to, to give it out to businesses. Truly, they do. However, the downside is they will not give more than $250,000 per applicant. So that frustrates some people, but we could use this as the first tranche and then go after additional funding thereafter. So what's the point? We're all here because we want to help people. And I suspect that you want to generate income. If you've signed up as a distribution partner, you should have the tools and resources and support to be successful. If you don't, it's kind of your job to raise your hand and let us know. You, we have our phone number and our email on here. For our distribution partners, we recommend scheduling weekly calls. So that way that we're staying on top of it. But if you need assistance furthermore, but I'm going to turn it over to you, ask you to go ahead and type into the Q&A, the question and answer. It's like a chat box, a Zoom. What do you need today so you can enroll at least one client? Because we went as Thomas Curran. Let me see if Thomas is on here or not. Uh, he is. Yeah, Mr. Kearns is on here. So what uh, Thomas Kearns coined is every day is payday, right? As a distribution partner, every day is payday. So today should be payday for you, Marvin Gunn. Today, Mr. Gunn, you should be paid. Marilyn Cochran, today should be payday for you. Mr. Larry Johnson, one of the most experienced people I've talked to in the past month. Mr. Johnson today absolutely should be payday for you, as well as for all of the rest of you. So what do you need to know? What's missing that's keeping you from being able to go enroll one client a day? So I'm going to open it up for, for Q&A. All right, uh, Tom, got another, we got several Toms on here, but but uh, not me and not Mr. Kearns. Another Tom's asking about how he gets paid. 
So Mr. McGee, he, here's how it works. Once you're set up as a distribution partner, we're going to provide you an editable version of the client agreement for clients to participate in the startup program. You determine how much you want them to pay, Mr. McGee. It, it's up to you, but they're paying you because it's going out under your brand. Now, the normal, so let, let me give the normal pricing. And then again, if you all want to get real fancy, you, you can. But Mr. McGee, the way it normally works is the client would pay you $2,500 at the time of enrollment. Why is that? Well, the program is actually $5,000. The grant covers half, and then of the other half, they're going to pay you $2,500, and then they're going to get everything we talked about, which is in writing. It's an agreement. Now, let's say they come back and they say, oh, well, uh, I don't have $2,500, Mr. McGee, but I really want to participate. I want a fundable business. So then you can offer them the buy now, pay later financing, which we've talked about. So in that case, Mr. McGee, you would just collect from them $500 instead of the $2,500, collect $500, call it a down payment. And then we can set up with them 0% financing through our buy now, pay later lending platform, which is great. 0% interest. We implement right away, so there's not like a hold up where they have to, it's not like a layaway plan, and we can move forward with them instantly. So the front end, Mr. McGee, comes to you today, and, and many of you are very successful, but, but some of you are really on a tight budget right now. Whatever is going on in your life with your situation and decisions has left you in a tight financial position. We can fix that today, right? Because every time a client enrolls, they're paying you either $2,500, which is the norm, or even if they want to use the buy now, pay later, they're paying you $500. Well, even just doing one client a day at $500 a day, if there's an average of 30 days in the month, that's $15,000 of income to you. And that's just the front end. Now, I know you'll have expenses, but I mean, would an extra $15,000 in kind of this worst case scenario not improve your liquidity? The bigger money, though, comes from the back end. You have the option, each of you have an option to add a performance fee to your client's capital raise. It's up to you. If you want to add a performance fee, you can, and you can decide what that amount is. So uh, take that the business that got $350 million from Beal Bank that I emailed you about. Let's just say, hypothetically, let's, let's pick uh, on someone here, Hector's on. Hector, good morning. So let's say that Hector was the referral partner that brought on the client that is obviously fundable. That's why they got funded, went to Beale Bank and got 350 million term loan. So if Hector brought that client and he charged, let's say, a 10% performance fee, what would his cut be? Who can tell me what Hector's cut would be if Hector? got 10% of a $350 million capital raise off of one client. If you can type it into the Q&A. Now, that's unusual, right? That, that's a very large funding amount. That's that's not normal. You know, normal is, is much more similar to this. But even if, if um, let's say, Ernestina is on the line, if Ernestina brought on a client today, that raised 250,000. Now the, the capital raise wouldn't happen today, right? It, it's gonna take, it's, it's, it, this is a 30 to 60 day process normally. Now, again, if the client's bringing some of this, it could go quicker, but normally it's 30 to 60 days. So that's why we've got to break your money, your financial projections into two parts. How much you get today, today, because as Thomas Kern says, every day is payday. Today you will be paid. Today you will be paid either 2,500 if the client's doing normal or worst case scenario, 500 if they're doing buy now, pay later. So you're getting that today, but to get the 10%, which would be 35 million as Marilyn correctly answered, 35 million is not going to be today, right? We've got to take any participant, help them become fundable, and then we go to funding. So figure 60 days out on the back end. 
But my goodness, if you can make an extra 15,000 in the next 30 days, wouldn't, wouldn't that help? All right, so who else has questions on, uh, I guess anything, you know, what is the grant? What does it provide? Which I guess is bulleted out here. What, why do we offer the program? What does it do? How does it work? How you get paid? How you participate? How you educate people? I, I don't know. You, you've got to let me know what's keeping you from planning on enrolling at least one client today. Today's Monday, January 22nd. There's not any reason in the world that every one of you can't enroll at least one client today. How do you enroll them, David asks. All right, well, let's go to the most basic, and that's a great question. Let's focus on the basics. So once you each have enrolled, which I think most of you have, as a distribution partner, there's two onboarding emails, email one and email two, appropriately. And so email two specifically has all of the resources for the startup package. So in that, you'll have an editable version of the proposal, editable version of the comparison document, which we talk about in this video, editable version of the client agreement, editable version of the press release, editable version of the PowerPoint, and so forth. So you all should have that. If you don't have that email with all the documents, then you need to let us know. But back to David's question, the editable version of the client agreement is, is kind of what's the point here. You're going to help, you're going to take that client agreement template because we're providing you the template that we use. It's actually the one we use. And you will remove our information and you will add your information. And by adding your information, now you're open for business. You're ready to enroll a client. So then the client would sign your agreement. You can have them sign it however you want. You could have them sign through Adobe or DocuSign, whatever you want. But once the client has signed up, then you're going to collect from them the money. How much money? Well, we said you determine, but normally it's either $2,500 if they're, they're doing the norm or $500 if they're doing the buy now, pay later. And so then with that, now we're ready to implement. And that's the beauty we do all the implementation. Our team, we hire the people, we put the time, we put the, the energy in to training and implementing the client. So as long as you can go out, create awareness, enroll clients, then we'll do all the implementation. There would be a much longer learning curve if we had to train you to do all the things that need to be done with the client, the implementation, but you don't have to. You've outsourced that to us, which is great. Marilyn says, yes, educating business owners is crucial. Yeah, because so many of them want funding. They need funding, but they're overlooking the basics of, do I have a fundable business? Because if they don't have a fundable business, they're not going to get funding. But conversely, if they do have a fundable business, then we can guarantee them funding. All right, so who has questions? What What is something that any of you, uh, Dulce, thank you for being on the, the Zoom this morning. Dulce, what do you need to know so today you can go enroll a client? What do you need to know? Jenny, thank you for being on this morning. I'm gonna th throw you out there. Jenny, what do you need to know so you can enroll a client today. I just I, I need to know what's missing from any of you. Marvin, one of the smartest men I know. Marvin, you've not enrolled anyone since the last eclipse. What's the problem, Marvin? What is it that we're not doing? Because it's got to be our fault. Because all of you are smart, you're motivated, and I think you're reasonably trained. So there's something about our, our implementation that's keeping you, Marvin, from getting paid. Because, Marvin, you didn't get paid yesterday, I don't think. Marilyn, did you get paid yesterday? Larry, did you get paid yesterday? If not, something's broken, right? And we need to fix it. And this is where we're gathered. So what is it that you need to know so you can take that editable client agreement, get the client under contract? All right, so... Samuel's asking about 
how to best explain what we do to the client. Great point. So Samuel, what we recommend is specifically to use this comparison and I'll, I'll click on this. We won't play it, but we had a training on it and I'll, I'll pause it as soon as it starts here. So if, if you remember, we had a training on this comparison document. If you don't have this, you should get it. We've had, we've actually had a couple different trainings. The embedded training that I just clicked on right here actually walks through a role play. So it would train you how to use that comparison document. So uh, I guess that's the answer, Samuel. If, if you or anyone else, you don't quite feel confident in talking to the client, I would watch this training. It's embedded right here in the middle, chapmanloanprogram.org. Make sure you have that comparison document, and that will give you the scripting, the words, the structure to follow. Now, if you have more time, certainly teaching them the full 10 mistake curriculum would be better, but this is 30 minutes online, an hour in person. That's a bigger commitment of time. You can walk someone through the comparison document very quickly. All right, so Salino says, if a client has the first four items, so the client already has all of this in place, what do we do? That's a great point. So it doesn't matter, Salino, if they have none of these items or if they have all of the items, it's the same process. So don't overcomplicate it. You're going to enroll them. You're Sorry, you're going to enroll them. You're going to collect from them, whatever it is you're going to collect. And then we will get together with them. We'll handle the implementation. But you're absolutely right. This is going to be very, very fast. The more that a person brings to the table, the quicker that it's going to be. That shouldn't be wrongfully interpreted to say, oh, I, I only want to go look for clients that already have a bunch of this. I, I don't think you need to do that. You need to explain what it takes to have a fundable business, which this comparison document training that I mentioned will do. But we'll pick it up from there. So if they have elements in place, great. If they have nothing, fine. If they have some of it, okay. But it, it, it doesn't really matter from your perspective. You're training what it takes to have a fundable business. We'll reconcile with them where they're at and help them become fundable. All right, so who else has questions, comments, concerns? We want each of you to be paid today. Again, as Thomas Kern says, every day is payday. Every one of you should be. We have 537 of you on this morning. That means 537 of you should be paid today. Should be paid today. Why? Because there's this massive need. There's so many people that either own or want to own a small business that want and need funding. So there's this huge opportunity. The problem is they're not fundable. And in many, in many cases, they don't even know what it means to be fundable. But you've got the solution, both through the education, the comparison sheet and or the PowerPoint, and the program which is subsidized by the grant, the startup program. So you're able to monetize by helping people. And that, that's how the economy works, right? Rather you're an oncologist or a car mechanic or a chef or a plumber, that's how the economy works. You solve other people's problems and they pay you. Well, we're running out of excuses. It's time now for you to go execute. And if we're not doing what we said or not providing you what you need, let us know because we want to do that. Hold us accountable. All right, Charles has got a good question and, and we'll probably close on this. He's asking, is it necessary for clients to enroll to, to have a written agreement? I would strongly recommend it because the power of the written agreement is it clarifies what the promises are by both parties. Just like each of you, when each of you signed up to be a distribution partner, which we talked about, if you've not done so, you can do here. Each of you made promises to us and us to you, right? We made a deal. And so you need to hold us accountable to do what we said we'd do. And we would ask you to be accountable for you. That, that's 
that's a good business relationship when you have a written agreement so the deal is clear, it's stated, it's in writing. So just like we want you to know what we promised and what we're expecting of you, I do think, Charles, that you're best served by having the client enroll in writing so there's no discrepancies. So again, we did that. We, we talked about the funding success story that I emailed to each of you this morning. Do you want your clients to all think, okay, well, I'll sign up with you, Charles, but I, I want that $350 million like that other company got. That's what you told me. No, we didn't guarantee anyone $350 million. Could it happen? Absolutely. Will it happen to everyone? Probably not. So, yes, Charles, I would recommend having a written agreement because it's it, it's the professional thing to do. It states what the promises are. You'd be surprised, Charles. We have some people that sign up as a distribution partner, and it's almost like they don't think that what they promise to do is important. But it is, right? What each of you promise to do is important, and what we promise to do is, is important. All right, so with that being said... I mean, the, the ball's in your court. We need to go implement. As Thomas Kearns has said, and I've quoted him several times today, every day is payday. There's no reason, no reason that you're not getting paid every day, including today. So let's go make today payday, and we'll see you back tomorrow morning. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.